selling that place, Mary. It sounds like they, you know, they're, they're getting you all set up to, for your second career. I'll, I'll tell you, I would love that career. I would absolutely love doing a B and B. I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd say I wouldn't do it, you know, all the time. I'd have to have a backup plan because I'd still need to travel a lot for Rotary. But, um, but yeah, I I would love to own that place. To be honest with you, I can imagine the house comes with it's it's share right. of troubles. But I would love that B and B. I have you. plans for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, let us know. <laughs> let's um, let's go ahead and get started. I think we have uh, we have 19 people this morning, and thanks for everybody for being here. Um, it's not an official Rotary meeting, but let's go ahead and start with the four-way test. Even if your microphone is off, it doesn't matter. Let's just run through it, and then I'll say a couple of words and turn it over to George to introduce our guest speaker. How about that? Sounds the good. We think, say, or do. Say or do. First, is it the truth? First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Fair to all concerned. Third, will it be goodwill and better goodwill friendships? friendships? And fourth, fourth will it be beneficial, fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Awesome. So, uh, I just want to make a quick announcement about the um, uh, the fundraiser for. Um, the, the girls program that we have going um, for getting food. Uh, I created a online link and we have uh, $281 that's been donated to that so far. So every week we're gonna go ahead and write a check for anything that's come in through that donation. So uh, consider that like a pass the hat kind of thing, but now we can do it virtually, so. Pretty hey Rob, I have a question on that. Uh, yes. Can I just write a check rather than going yes. and putting my credit card information there? Yeah, absolutely. They, I think in the first email that Dave sent out about it, there's a, an address to just send a check directly to them. That's fine. Okay. Um, we, I can send that to you, Guna. Okay. Yeah, so the, the thing is, is that I think they have a, a fundraiser Facebook page, but those things are so far delayed you know, when the program is over, then there's a delay and then they get that donation. This can be given to them as it comes in. It takes about two days before we see it. So uh, anyway, I just wanted an update on that. That's, you know, another almost $300 for that. Um, so I wanna welcome Mary and I'd like George, if you could, can you give a quick introduction for Mary before her program? Sure, I would be ha happy to. Um, one of the things, hearing us try to do the four-way test, I just got to say, I am now even more blown away by these online concerts that people are have been doing. We we, yeah, we no. four-way test, and they're you know they're they're performing uh, concerts. So, um, well, uh, so I first um, met uh, Dr. Mary Birch at a Zone event. Um, and I met her briefly and somehow we became friends on Facebook. I probably friend requested her and you know how you meet someone, you make friends and then you kind of don't remember who they are. And I just kept seeing this woman pop up, always running somewhere, always running. It's seven below and she's running. It's pouring rain and she's running. It, um, she's, a bank and she's running. It's, so she's always running. And, and I just thought she's kind of crazy actually. Um, and then I got to know her a little bit more and, and realized more fanatical than crazy. Um, and since we have been um, uh, on lockdown throughout the United States, um, Mary, Dr. Mary Burge has spoken to Rotary clubs from uh, Africa to Pennsylvania to Ohio and all over the place. And she has a wonderful program um, basically <laughs> sane while locked up in your house. And, uh, so with that, um, Mary, uh, uh, please meet the members of my club and members of my club, please, Dr. Mary Burge. Hi everybody. Thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, if everyone wants to mute themselves, that way you don't get any bumps from cats in the background and, and crying children and all that stuff. <laughs> 
And I, I discovered that the coolest way to unmute yourself, I discovered this early in the week, is just by pressing your space bar. I never knew that before. I'm learning all these new Zoom tricks. It's so cool. So, so yeah, Zoom definitely is connecting the Rotary world. But thanks for having me. So today I want to talk about um, staying sane during COVID-19. And if you're like every one of my friends, family, coworkers, you're probably feeling a bit overwhelmed and maybe even anxious or irritable, um, mentally, emotionally, and physically exhausted from this whole um, strange times right now. So I really want to give you some tips on how to create balance, regain some of that control, and like I said, stay sane during these weird times. So first, first tip, usually I tell my patients when they're experiencing any kind of um, situ situation, stressful situation in their life, that information is power. Usually that helps the situation. But in this case, as you probably are figuring out by now, information is actually overload. It is coming at us like a fire hose. So my first tip today is to absolutely limit the amount of information that you're allowing input into your life to simply two times per day. And um, make sure that your information is coming from reliable sources versus sensational media. I like to limit my two inputs per day to my state website and maybe one news website because my state or county website is really all i need to know um, right here right now what i need to do uh, to maybe change my routine or what some of the new rules are for the day or for the week um, and then one news site for more global information and i limit that to one time in the morning and one time in the afternoon late afternoon nothing after 6 or 7 p.m because you really have have to allow your mind to decompress and recover from the day um, and stress of this time. Okay, my second biggest tip is about routine. Routine is absolutely critical to most persons' um, physical success and emotional success, as well as mental success. Um, a lack of schedule can actually make you feel lethargic, um, even doubtful. So people do better when they know what is expected of them, especially when they're under stress. So I want you to stick to your regular workday schedule. Um, if you do eight hours at the office, then do eight hours at home. And the best way to break up monotony is um, by chunking your schedule into two hour increments. And at the end of every two hours, I want you to take a 10 minute break, just like you would at work, at exactly the same as you would at work, only you're not going to visit a coworker to chat, um, but I want you to leave the room you're in, go to a different room and do something different. Maybe you read a book for 10 minutes, maybe you do some stretches, listen to some music. Best thing you can do for those 10 minutes is to get outside. Um, oh, I'm hearing some feedback. Is somebody still un not muted? I don't know who it is, but I heard some weird screech. Okay, well, it's better now. <clears throat> All right, so typically if you chunk your day into two hour increments and you do stick to a regular schedule, you're gonna feel more productive and more successful at the end of your day. Um, routine also means taking care of yourself. And the stay at home order, it's, it's not an excuse just to give up, you know, life is still moving as fast as ever. So it's not a time to give up our, our diets, um, to binge, to start binge drinking all day or to stop exercising. And in fact, more than ever, uh, this might be a time when we actually need to really stick to our regular uh, physical routine with nutrition, fitness goals, hydration. And I mentioned hydration because hydration and emotional well-being are, are super connected. Um, the more stressed out you are, the more overwhelmed you are or anxious, actually the faster, good job, George, the faster your body dehydrates. So I want you to put into your fitness goals and your nutrition goals to actually get 60 ounces of water every day into your system. And I said the word goal. I try to make a fitness goal every day, um, a nutrition goal, and a water goal every day as a part of my regular routine. And that helps me stay on track. When I don't do that, it's easy just to say, eh, I'm not going to go running, even though it's beautiful, sunny, and 40 degrees outside today, you know? So please, routine, schedules, goals. Okay, my third tip is to teach yourself how to thought control. 
And um, we, we basically are very able to control thoughts, our own, of course. Um, there are three types of thought patterns, and they are positive thinking, negative thinking, or neutral thought patterns. And um, negative thought patterns often lead to depression and anxiety, whereas positive and even neutral thinking patterns will elevate mood and um, actually promote your well-being. And there are two really simple ways to turn a negative thought pattern into a positive one. And the, the first one is simply with gratitude. I want you all to take a moment here, just 10 seconds, and I want you to reflect on what you're grateful for. Go, take 10 seconds. Okay. I want you to now to do a little biofeedback. I want you to check in with yourself. Like, how did that make you feel when you think about the things you're grateful for? You know, George say, or I think it was Kathy was saying she's cleaning out all kinds of cupboards and doing yard work. Some of this time has led us all to clean out cupboards. And one of the things I'm grateful for when I cleaned out my kitchen cupboard was I found some honey that I had purchased and at the Toronto International Convention and it was from Zambia. So I am grateful for bees. I'm grateful for bees because that honey is delicious. I've been drinking it every morning for my afternoon tea. And I'm just, I'm so grateful those darn bees made that honey for me. And I'm grateful that I had the time to find it in my kitchen cupboard because it was gone. So whatever it is, even if it's something like I'm grateful for my spouse or my family or health, it can be something huge like that or something as simple as bees. Notice how that begins to change your internal mood. The second way to, to induce positive thinking is with smiling. Research has shown that smiling, even a forced or fake smile, especially when done for at least five seconds, releases certain chemicals in the brain. Gratitude and smiling and laughing release dopamine. And dopamine is the, is the neurotransmitter chemical that is responsible for your happiness. It is the happiness chemical. And when dopamine gets released in our system, our bodies, our, our, our feedback system feels wonderful and we actually want more. So by smiling, by actually just leaning in and smiling for a few seconds, it actually releases dopamine. I want you all to even experiment with this after this meeting. I want you to go and look in the mirror and smile for 10 seconds. And you'll be amazed at what an effect it can have on you. I take my depressed patients and make them do smiling exercises, even for smiles, because that and the gratitude statement, statements release dopamine in their brain and we can begin to shift their patterns of thought and their depressive pathways. So, Gratitude and smiling, get that dopamine flowing so that you can shift your negative thoughts into more positive thinking. Um, you know, there's an interesting effect to um, uh, sort of, I would call it a ripple effect of smiling. You know, have you ever noticed that when someone is yawning, all of a sudden you have the need to yawn? Well, the same is actually true with smiling. It's actually very infectious. So if you can smile at other people as well, you're going to infect them with dopamine because immediately they'll wanna smile back at you. Even if they're not happy, they will smile back at you typically. And when that happens, they get a little release of dopamine. So now um, one of the biggest enemies of dopamine is anxiety. And one of the easiest ways to produce anxiety is with what if thinking. Um, what if thinking is futuristic thinking. Um, so what if this quarantine goes on more than 30 days? What if my business begins to fail? What if someone I know gets sick? What if I lose someone from this? All of that thinking is future oriented thinking. It's as if you're standing on a bridge in the future that hasn't been built. And what if thinking causes a tremendous amount of anxiety in us? In fact, it's, it's probably one of the greatest forms um, of birth, of giving birth to anxiety. Um, if we had three Petri dishes, we had one that was labeled the past, and we had a Petri dish that was labeled the present, and a Petri dish that was labeled the future. Anxiety would breed the best in the future Petri dish. 
It breeds fairly well in the past, which we call should have, would have, could have thinking. But in the present Petri dish, it cannot breed. When we're mindful and present right here, right now, anxiety cannot exist. It's only when we move into that future what if thinking. And when we get caught up in what if thinking or some form of worry, the amygdala, a tiny little part of your limbic system, there's one in each hemisphere, starts sending messages to the hypothalamus and that sends off the fire alarm to either fight, fight, flight, or freeze. And when you have that type of response, your body then gets the message, your autonomic nervous system gets the message to begin to feel anxious, to sweat, to have those butterflies in your stomach, to feel nervous. Um, and this is what basically people who have anxiety disorders or panic disorders feel all the time. So I'm going to teach you two ways that you can shut down that system almost instantaneously. The first is with a deep breathing exercise. Now, most of us believe that we know how to do deep breathing, but I'm going to teach you how to do it absolutely 100% correct, just in case you were trained poorly. All right. So first of all, you have to breathe in only through your nose. And then you hold your breath for a few moments, and then you breathe out through your mouth. And both intake and output need to be excruci excruciating slow. It has to be super slow. And I like to pierce my lips when I'm breathing out so that I can force the air out very, very slowly. And I also like to use the body to raise up and the body to come back down because as you come out of your breath, you're gonna feel how all of your muscles begin to relax. So we're, I'm gonna do this first, okay? I'm gonna show you how it's done. So here we go, and inhale, very slow. Okay, I'm finally full, I'm gonna hold my breath. And I'm going to exhale. That's how slow a deep breath should go. That takes about 30 seconds or more. So since I don't want to feel too weird about having done that, we're all going to do it together. So everybody lean in a little bit and kind of drop your head. All right, very slow and use your body on my count of three. One, two, three, inhale, very slow. And when you're full, you can hold. And exhale, slow, as slow as possible. Allowing your body to just sink into it. Let your body relax with it. Good. Now do a little biofeedback. Check in with yourself. How does that feel? Feels nice, doesn't it? Does feel nice. Now typically I like my patients to do that three times. You must be sitting down when you do this because it actually on the third breath, you can actually get a little lightheaded. And if you find that three is too much, go back to two. But deep breathing turns that amygdala system off. Now there's another special technique and I'm gonna share my screen with you first. It is called bio or bilateral sound therapy. But this guy is my favorite, Dave Grand, and he coins it biolateral sound. And um, bilateral or bilateral sound therapy is a unique technique that I'm using in therapy with almost all of my clients. Um, it works for a, a ton of things. It's just unbelievable. And let's see if I can stop the share. Did you go? Let me get you back up here. I can't see you. Let's see all right, hopefully that worked for you. Did that, uh, Kathy, give me the thumbs up if that worked. Oh, wait, I can't see anybody now. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Um, it worked, Kathy, Mary. It did? Okay. Yep. Thank you. I, could, I lost yep, my I ability. see your calendar. Okay, good. <laughs> Hang on. You've got my calendar up right now? Yep. Uh -huh. All right. 
hold on. I apologize for this. I normally I'm pretty good at this stuff. I was trying something new today. Go figure. All right, let's get this off. Turn that off. And you can see bilateral now. Can you see David Grand now? Yep, got it now. Terrific. Okay. There's my stop share. Okay. So this guy, I believe he is by far one of the, the best. Um, his product is just, I think it's awesome. So I, this is how, whom I use with my patients. And this can be downloaded on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube. I just get it right off of YouTube usually. And you can also buy his CDs at his website. Okay. So, um, what, what you do, I'm gonna teach you how to use it now. First of all, you need earbuds. So you get the music on your, on your cell phone, you put in your earbuds and you close your eyes. And as you listen to the music, you'll notice that you hear it in one ear and then the next, and then one ear and the next, and it keeps going back and forth. And you'll notice that your eyes actually track the music. You'll, sometimes you'll feel like it's in a pattern of sorts. And as that's happening, and it happens very naturally, you won't have to force it your brain begins to produce a wave that crosses both hemispheres of the brain, crossing that midline section of the brain. And that wave causes incredible relaxation and it turns the amygdala and the messaging center to the hypothalamus off. The two cannot really play together at all. They don't play well together. And this bilateral sound almost always wins. And it usually works within three to six minutes. So anxiety can be turned off rather quickly by using one of these two techniques. Um, and again, I'm using that in session with almost all of my clients. It, it's very helpful with depression. It's helpful with anxiety, irritability and anger. And it's also great with sleep. Um, I use it sometimes when I can't sleep or when I need to concentrate. I'll even use it with my eyes open, just in the background with the earbuds on. It helps me to concentrate and focus sometimes. So. Um, lastly, I want to talk to you about decision making. And at, before we started this meeting, we were kind of chatting here on Zoom, and, and a lot of us are already practicing this, but it's worth saying anyhow. Um, while we can't control many aspects of this time, we can control um, how we decide to handle the situation. You can either use this for the better, or you can fail to use it at all. And you know we've been through a lot of hard times before, so we have to remember that we will get through this time as well. And at the end of this time, yes, you are going to be different, but hopefully you're going to be different for the better. Um, but that's your choice, that's your decision. Decide what you wanna do with this time. You know, maybe it's that you want to learn something new, a new language, or you want to get those books read that have been sitting on your shelf forever. For me, it's taking um, online classes. I'm actually taking an online writing class with, um, in, they're called master classes. One is with David Sedaris. He's one of my favorite authors. And the other is with Thomas Keller, who's one of my favorite chefs. So I'm learning to write and speak better and I'm learning to cook better, hopefully. <laughs> so those are like my goals, my short-term goals for this time. And by setting um, goals and working towards these short-term, and I always say written goals because writing is cathartic, you are more likely to come out of this mentally and emotionally healthier. Um, I believe that there are gonna be many good and interesting changes that come from this time. Perhaps even a, a, a renaissance of the human spirit. Um, we're going to value things differently. Our connections with each other, our connections in Rotary, our connections with, with neighbors, with our children. We're going, to, we're going to value things, even products, differently. You know, I was um, born in 1967, and in those times, families always ate dinner together. My mother cooked dinner every single night that we were home. And guess what? That's come back. I'm not sure when we lost that, but at some point in the last 20 years, that went by the wayside. It's back. I think that's a wonderful thing that we're going to get back from this time. So, um, you know, the human touch will be valued differently. Some people will fear it forever. Others, you'll just give them eye contact and they're going to want to hug you. So, um, you know, we're going to value things different and come out of this differently. So decide how you want to use this as an opportunity 
versus just focusing on the adversity. You know, life, as I said before, is not on pause. Um, so we need to do this with grace and with sanity and dignity. Um, so after this meeting, I'm going to encourage you to write down what your short-term goal is going to be for how this period will um, change you in a positive way for the better. Uh, those are my hot like five tips for how to stay sane and, and improve your well-being during this time. And I'm going to open it up for questions. I'll mute myself until... I hear televisions in the background, but no questions. <laughs> I have a question for you. Uh, I don't think you can hear me. I can. Cece, is that you? Or oh, Sian? Good. Okay, yes. So I recognize, of course, the, the breathing techniques from helping people overcome anxiety and labor. <laughs> um, yes. How, what, how much did behavioral health learn from traditional techniques for natural childbirth? Good question. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure I wouldn't, I've never looked at that particular research, but boy, doesn't that make sense that uh, a lot of what we do for meditation, for biofeedback, you know, stems back from probably the 60s, 70s and, and learning how to regulate body response. And, you know, childbirth, um, headaches, nausea, all these things can be regulated somewhat through biofeedback and physiological techniques. The mind, the body, and the soul, and the emotional psyche are all connected. So I would imagine we learned a lot from, from each other in that respect. I use a lot of biofeedback techniques in my work to this day. The, the other thing I was thinking about, um, I know that when you're afraid, your zone of perception shrinks a lot. And I'm wondering if, if when you're trying to talk somebody through something, there's any uh, evidence that it's useful to lean into the screen if you're doing virtual counseling and invite them to lean in with you. Actually, there is research about all sorts of body language, but um, yes, your zone of perception does get distorted when you're anxious or worried. I even lean in um, in session. I will even get up out of my chair and move across the room um, when we're not social distancing and I'll sit on the coffee table right in front of my patient within inches of them. Because what happens when the amygdala and the hypothalamus are sending messages to each other, again, that fire alarm is going off and it's like, it might be something this small that you're actually afraid of, but it feels, you know, huge. And so that turns the frontal lobe off and the frontal lobe is responsible for coping skills, problem solving, rat reasoning, all of those things that you need to go, okay, it's really not that big of a deal. So by me coming into your field of, of you know, view and getting close to you, it does like, it kind of almost says, look at me. It's almost hypnotic and that we all come together. My patient and I come together when it's just us. And it does sort of say, let's take a moment here. It's not so big, you know, like fear is so big. So yeah, thank you, Sian. I have a problem. <laughs> we need to mute. If you can mute everybody except for who's talking, I can need tons of feedback. Just press your space yeah, bar. Press the space bar. Okay, Bill, go. So you know, I was a firefighter paramedic for 24 years, so I was always on guard, ready to be dispatched. And I had an auto repair shop, and now I'm full time auto repair. And I live in the what if world because I've got, I used to have 10 employees. Now I have five employees, four are laid off and one's on furlough. And I'm just, you know, I'm soaking up the news and watching the scientists that I like to watch and watching the economists that I like to watch. And, and I'm, you know, worried about the survival of my business. I did get the PPP loan and that's in my account. So that's a, a eight weeks of relief there. But I, I mean, I constantly, I'm on edge and I'm what if 24 seven, 365. So um, 
One of my areas of expertise, Bill, is um, I work almost primarily with first responders, um, firefighters, EMTs, police officers, military, state police. I'm a debriefer. And um, this technique, this bilateral sound, works very nicely for in, in between uh, the times when you need to be on alert because your population actually does need to be on alert a lot more than the rest of us. Um, but my, my first responders really like this because it is so temporary and yet it doesn't turn off your, um, well, you guys have sort of a special, um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's like a, a superhero kind of um, superpower. And you, you guys, your radar needs to be up a little higher than the rest of us. So the nice thing about this is that it turns it off temporarily, but it doesn't shut you down. It doesn't take away that sort of need to be on alert still. Um, so yeah, it does work really well for first responders um, because it down. is so, so, pardon? I wrote that down, the bilateral and stuff, so I was gonna look into that. Perfect, yeah, and and because you don't have to be thinking about it all the time. Part of the problem with first responders is, is that they're always on. I use a lot of techniques. Um, boy, Bill, we could have a whole conversation on this, but there's techniques about how you leave work and, and how do you get home on ways that you can begin to uh, take yourself out of that role and yet still well, be on ready, ready I role. Did, I did retire from the fire department and I'm not a volunteer anymore, but um. You know, it's kind of translated over into my business world where I am I'm responsible for these employees and responsible for my family and, you know, the debt and all that stuff. And we were rolling. We were going to have a record year. We've been having record years after year after year. I was going to build a new build another building here. And, and now, you know, it's all urch. And I think we were pretty well positioned. But um, I'm just, you know, I'm always doing the what if. What if this lasts till November? What if, you know, what am I going to do in eight weeks if, Things haven't changed. Who's going to go? My next late, you know, stuff like that. Right. So, so one thing you could do, Bill, and this is for everybody, because I think we we are all intellectuals in some way. And so you're, and Bill, you're a planner. I hear you saying I'm responsible for a lot of people. Me too. You know, I got 20 people that's working for me. I, I'm the I'm the sole provider. Evar does. I don't pay Evar to do what he's doing right now. <laughs> you know, it's like the, I'm the sole. I go down. We go down. So, um, but I don't what if, I plan. Yeah. So if you can take it from the what if thing to how can I be best prepared for uh, if this goes beyond May, what's my short-term goal and what's my short-term plan for the next 60 days? That still keeps you in the present and planning mode. So take it out of what if, because that, that those words, what if, create fear that immediately, if you all do that, go, what if? You can feel it in your gut. What if makes that, it's so fast. What if I say, okay, I'm going to plan for the end of May just in case this goes further. Do you hear how that's different? Just in case. That puts you in control. Thank you. Great. And Mary, thank you for putting a... Uh, David Grant's information on the chat. So anybody who's online, if you can see the chat mode, uh, it's down there and I can send an email out to the club as well too with the, that information. Thank you, Mary. Sure thing. And you can just Google him and he'll come up all over the place. But in any bilateral sound, just B-I lateral, um, anything on YouTube is pretty good, but he's just my, I just think his product's the best. So start with him. Anybody else? Wow, Mary, this this was really a great program. I really appreciate you jumping in and thanks George for bringing you on board for this. Really, really great information. My pleasure, my absolute pleasure. Um, and, and Rob, I did record this on Zoom and I can send the link out, if Mary, if you're okay with that. Yep, I'm perfectly fine with that. Sorry about my inability to share the screen all of a sudden. That kind of screwed you up in the middle, but absolutely share no, with everybody and everybody. Okay. Thank and, you. And Mary, we, you know, our tradition is we'll we'll donate a book in your honor to a local preschool. Um, I don't ha have the information in front of me, but we are doing that for a local preschool for you. 
Barbara's got Barbara's it. showing it on her screen. And oh, I'll, I'll unmute you, Barbara. Okay, let's switch over to Barbara. Barbara, you're unmuted now. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is, you... it is Spot the Plot. It's a riddle book of book riddles. Yay. Yay. What preschools it go to this week? Oh. Um, yeah. It goes to a uh, deer. Little sheep. <laughs> hey, George, that's for you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I have another meeting in five minutes, so I'm going to jump off, okay? okay. Thanks so Good much, Mary. You guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mary. Bye-bye. All right, everyone. I think that's a, that's a pretty good wrap. That was a great program. Thanks, Kathy. <clears throat> Absolutely. Bye, everybody. Have a great Let day. Let me know if you want to skip. <laughs> I got to Bye, see everyone. Good to see you virtually. <laughs> Bye everyone. <laughs> Stay safe. Bye. All right. Thank you. We'll we'll catch up later. Thanks. Bye. Rob, let me know if you want to schedule any more. Uh, yes, I I will have another one for next week. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. I'm so in the meeting. Okay. Bye everyone. <laughs>